Muy bien, clase. You've got your papel y lápiz in front of you. You'll be writing six sentences. They are kind of longish, but it's only six. It's not that bad. And you'll find that this is all review of things we've worked on recently, uh, specifically comparatives and superlatives. And we're going to work on how to put a whole bunch in a sequence in one sentence. Uh, first, let's review. We know how to say something is good, like el helado es bueno. Sure is. Oh, yeah. We know how to say better, like la galleta es mejor. Oh, cookies are even better. I know you can argue it, you know, cookies, ice cream, which is better. It's a tough call. And we know how to say best, like el sandwich de galletas y helado es el mejor. Oh. And yeah, why argue when you can just have both in a beautiful, delicious sandwich? There you go. Now, we can combine all of those together and make one crazy sequential comparative sentence. El helado es bueno, la galleta es mejor, pero un sandwich de galletas y helado es el mejor. Ice cream is good, cookies are better, but uh, ice cream and cookies sandwich or sandwich of cookies and ice cream is best. Remember, in Spanish, to say best, you have to say el mejor, otherwise you're just saying better. So that el or la is quite important. Make sure to include that article adjective. Let's look at one more example just to refresh. We know how to say bad, like comer un zapato es malo. Oh, Charlie Chaplin. Bad form. And we know how to say worse, like comer un zapato sucio es peor. Mm. Sucio means dirty, by the way. And we know how to say worst. Comer un zapato sucio que tiene un serpiente vivo es el peor. <laughs> Remember, el peor is how we would differentiate between worst and just worse. So make sure you have the article adjective in there. So, And I think we can agree that eating a, a dirty shoe with a snake in it is worst. So put it all together. Comer un zapato es malo. Comer un zapato sucio es peor. Pero comer un zapato sucio que tiene un serpiente vivo es el peor. Eating a shoe is bad, eating a dirty shoe is worse, but eating a dirty shoe that has a living snake in it is worst. Alright, let's give it a try. Try to make one on your own here. To sleep on the floor is bad. Alright, you can pause the video and write out this first part of your sentence. Alright, and check it now. To sleep on the floor is bad. Dormir en el piso es malo. It's true, I've tried it. Hard on your neck. How about to sleep on the floor outside is worse? Again, pause the video, write it out, give it a shot, and then you can check it. That's, that's right, here we go. Dormir en el piso afuera es peor. Sleeping on the floor outside is worse. Pero, but, to sleep on the floor outside in a storm is worst. Or you could, in English you could say the worst. Either way. Pero dormir en el piso afuera en una tormenta es el peor. All right. Think you got the idea? Ooh, don't sleep outside in this storm. Moving on, another one here. To have a car, in Spanish, auto, is good. All right, pause and write it down. That's right, tener un auto es bueno. To have 12 cars is better. Mm. Tener 12 autos es mejor. But, to have 12 Aston Martins with steering wheels of pure gold is best. All right, pause it and write your sentence down and let's see what you got. All right, check it now. Pero 
Tener doce autos Aston Martin con volantes de oro puro es el mejor. Muy bien, clase. And here's my car collection. Just a few that I've collected over the years, you know. So, nice to have transportation and all that, you know. Now, pause for a second and let's remember that in most superlative sequences, you're not going to have the worst or best scenario where you have these specialized words like mejor and uh, peor. Instead, you're just going to use más and menos to reflect that most and least idea. Let's look at one example here. New Hampshire is small. That'd be something like Nuevo Hampshire es pequeño. Ah, there it is. Delaware is smaller. Delaware es más pequeño. Now, see how we're using, you know, more small to signify smaller. And there's Delaware for us. But Rhode Island is smallest. Pero Rhode Isla es el más pequeño. And again, remember, don't forget the article adjective el or la there to signify the smallest instead of just saying smaller. If you just said Ro Rhode Island es más pequeño, you'd just be saying Rhode Island is smaller. But we want smallest. So we got to have the L or La. And there's Rhode Island. What a small little state, but still very nice. Uh, again, around here, most Spanish speakers would probably just call them by their name in English. I don't think you'll hear anyone actually say Rhode Isla. Um, yeah. All right, try one on your own here. Numero tres. Ecuador is big. All right, pause and write your sentence. And now check it. Ecuador es grande, that's right. And there it is. How the next sentence? Mexico is bigger. And that's right. Remember, in Spanish, you would use the structure more big. Mexico is more big. And so that's right. Mexico es más grande. There it is. But Russia is the biggest. All right, pause and write it down. And remember, don't forget the article adjective la or el to signify biggest instead of just bigger. All right, check it now. Here you go. Pero Rusia es el más grande. And it is too. Rush is big. Pretty darn big. Alright. Number cuatro. Past halfway now. Here we are. The cat is small. That's right. El gato es pequeño. Aww. The next part. The mouse is smaller. If you're thinking, Mr. Cox, we don't know how to say mouse. Yes, you do. Just like in English, the computer mouse and the animal mouse are the same word. El ratón es más pequeño. More small. And, oh, there's a cute little mouse. They're cute as long as they're not in my house. But the ant or me guys, I say end, is smallest. And remember the structure for that for the superlative that's small less. Otherwise you're just saying is smaller. Alright, check it here. La hormiga es la más pequeña. Make sure you've got that la, that's the superlative small list. Alright, two left here. Oh, there's our ant. Yeah, it's small. All right, and as you write, don't forget adjective noun agreement, gender and number. All right, here's one. A frog is ugly. That's right. Una rana es fea. Did you make a match? Both feminine, rana, fea. 
Next part. The bug is uglier. You can use insect though for bug. It's a nice cognate for us. Yep, here you go. El insecto es más feo. Now it's masculine, because insecto is masculine. And remember, more ugly for uglier. Más feo. Last part. But the teacher is ugliest. Pause and write it down. All right, check it. Pero el maestro, Señor Cox, es el más feo. Don't forget the L. Otherwise, you're just saying uglier. But we want to say ugliest. So, el más feo. And last one. Ultima. Last. First part. Teachers are smart. Hmm. Uh, I've been told that's true by someone, I think. Los maestros son inteligentes. Second part. Scientists are smarter. That's científicas. Accent on the middle I. Remember, more smart in Spanish is the structure. Los cien, las científicas son más inteligentes. And finally, students are the smartest. I've also heard that. Pero, los estudiantes son los más inteligentes. And just a note here, usually you're going to use el and la if you're talking about singular stuff, but in this case we're talking about plural things, so we make it match the number, so we say los más inteligentes. The most intelligent is for how we say smartest. And there you go. Now you've got some great sample sentences for how to do the comparatives and superlatives, the kind of good, better, best, more, even more, most, and that kind of thing. It's all set up just like these sentences we've been doing. All right, good job, class, and that's all for today. Adios.